Hello, 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 and welcome to Miss Hope's Reading Hour. Sorry, sorry, so sorry for my tardiness. Had a few technical difficulties. I was like, oh no, we got to fix this. Namely, my computer that I'm working on right now, until the parts come in for my other computer, it was almost dead. I was like, oh no, we can't have this again. We can't have this again. Can't die again. So I was like, oh, we got to plug you up to give you some juice. Okay. Well, it is a wonderful Wednesday on Miss Hope's Reading Hour. I'm so glad to be here with all of you, all of my fellow readers. Hopefully, when you are not on this Hope's Reading Hour, you're still reading because books are awesome. So I've been doing a lot of reading, okay, because you all know that just like you are in school, Miss Hope is in school too. So I have to do a lot of reading, a whole lot, okay? So I feel your pain, fellow students with all of the reading and things, but reading is awesome because you can learn so many new things, learn about new places and new people, animals and things like we did on our Marvelous Monday. And you'll know all of those things, maybe not just by sitting in the classroom, but by reading all of the wonderful books that are out there, okay? So how was your Tuesday. Hopefully it was terrific. Hopefully you had a great day today and that you are ready for some good books, my friends. Okay. Now, before we move on with Miss Hope's reading hour, just to let you know, this music that you hear and the, mu and the books that we read, Miss Hope does not own any rights to any of those things. But they are used for your enjoyment while we are together here on Miss Hope's Reading Hour, okay? And also, if you want to, I would so appreciate it if you would, you have the opportunity to donate to Miss Hope's Reading Hour. Now, there's something that I spoke about that I haven't said anything about in a couple of weeks. Okay, so if you want to donate, right down here on this ticker is all the information that you need to be able to donate. And people are still donating. So for all of you who have donated, all of the new members of Miss Hope's Reading Hour on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Periscope, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all being here and allowing me to read for you all. I appreciate it so much. So if you want to donate, you can. And also, I am still looking for guest readers for the Miss Hope's Reading Hour. So if you are one of my young friends, one of, my, one of the students, one of the children who watch this show, and you would like to be a guest reader on Miss Hope's Reading Hour broadcast, you can use the same email address that's down here in this ticker. Send me an email address. Have your parents send me an email, email and you can be a guest reader on Miss Hope's Reading Hour, okay? Also, all of my friends who may be a part of an organization that works with, helps, assists children and families, I still want to wear your t-shirt and shout out your organization. I still want to. Also, I would like for you to come on and be a guest reader and talk about your organization. Because during this time where we're in the pandemic and people are not going out as much, you think that these organizations don't still need our assistance, but they do. And I want parents and children 
to know that there's people out there who want to help you during this time. And I want people to know that these organizations are still doing really great work so that anyone who wants to donate to them, you can donate. And to let you know that I'm serious about it, if someone from an organization who um, helps children and families comes on Miss Hope's Reading Hour or sends me a t-shirt, I will wear that t-shirt and I will put your information so that people can donate to you in the ticker, okay? Now that we've said all of those things, let us get to the books. Let us, you'll understand why I find that funny. Because today's books are talking about what happens with some foods. So we talked about this before, like what happens in the house when the humans aren't there? What happens with the food in the refrigerator when no one's at home? Sometimes they have a parte, okay? Can you believe it? I wonder if a camera would catch them having a parte. One of our teaser books for today, if you saw the teaser, our first book is Parte, Dance of the Veggies and Their Friends. This is what happens, parties happen. Written by Eloise Greenfield, illustrated by Don Tate. Let's find out what happens with the things in the refrigerator when everybody leaves the house at the party, okay? We will find out today. Also, what if you are a nice Mexican treat as you could hear with our ambiance. And once you get out of the pan, you gotta run for your life because all of the desert creatures are trying to get a piece of you because you look tasty. Senorita Gordita. You see, she's running, okay? So we're gonna find out what happens to Senorita Gordita. This book is by Helen Ketterman and Will Terry. Senorita Gordita, okay? Foods having parties and having to run for their lives. We gotta find out what happens to them. And we will get back into our new chapter book, Walking with Miss Millie. So we found out on Monday that old Miss Millie is a little feisty. So walking with Miss Millie might be more interesting than we think it is. Walking with Miss Millie by Tamara Bundy. We will be reading this as well. All right, my friends, let's get into our first book. Parte. Dance of the Veggies and Their Friends. Written by Eloise Greenfield, illustrated by Don Tate. This is an Alizar Press book. All right, Ooh, let me make sure I didn't skip the page. Sometimes these newer feeling pages, they stick together. All right. The head of cabbage sitting in the fridge. Here's the front door close. Here's the click of the key turning the lock. <laughs> Ooh, make sure you see the picture. Ooh, sorry. Oh. 
He opens the refrigerator door, peeps out, then creeps through the dark rooms to the front window. He looks out and sees in the moonlight his people getting into the car. He's checking it out to make sure they're gone. <laughs> Cabbage watches the car pull off, runs back to the kitchen, and turns on the light. He stands in the middle of the floor, skinny legs and feet apart, skinny arms high in the air, throws his head back and yells, Party! <laughs> oh boy, what is this going to be like? Out of the fridge, excuse me, comes the veggies and their friends. They hear the cabbage calling, love the message that he sends. They see the magic instruments sailing into place. Eggplant takes the piano. Basil takes the bass. Tomato takes the saxophone. Swiss chard takes the drum. They make a mighty music for the party that succumb. The others form a circle and then begin to sway they clap to all the rhythms. Dancers dance in their own way. Did you know they do all of this? <laughs> they have instruments and everything. First up, zucchini in the center of the circle. Zucchini's cool. Let's the music tell him how to move, what to do. Yeah. Showing off a little bit, but mostly in his head, he's far away, dancing in the world of, of the music. Cool party. I will never look at a zucchini the same again. Hip hop string bean. She is mean, rippling her arms like waves in the ocean, pumping her knees, a string bean in motion. Hip hop doing the pop. Hip hop, she can't stop, she can't stop. Somebody save me, her friends hear her say. But she's still dancing, even as asparagus is dragging her away. Whew! Party! <laughs> wow. There's some party animals, okay? Well, veggies. The baby limas wobble dance, can hardly stand at all. Their mamas run and catch them the moment they start to fall. Aww, party! They're like, come on, mom, we want to party. The chili peppers right on beat stomping their feet they're hot say what hot i said hot man they're hot ouch party <laughs> mr corn and mrs arugula waltz they one two three one two three one two three one 
He holds her hand. She dips, leans, turns. They long step walk to the music, waltz to the music. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Oh, parte. Oh my goodness, Mr. Corn has a mustache. I can't believe it. The sweet potato sisters watching from their bin, waiting, ever patient for their turn to begin. Then the sweet potato sisters dance as sweet as pie, pirouette and flit and flutter, curtsy with a sigh. Oh my, parte. <laughs> They're classy ladies, okay? Artichoke doesn't want to dance. He is much too shy, but the other dancers beg him and he thinks that he should try. He keeps his head and shoulders down and moves a little bit. But then he hears his friends all say, go choke, go choke, go choke, go choke. You're going to be a hit. And so he leaps and twirls and laughs and ends up with a split. Wow, parte. <laughs> These are some wild veggies. The veggies and their friends leave the circle, dance all over the place, the kale, the collards, the yellow squash, etc., 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 all doing their own thing. They dance until they tire and start to sweat. Oh, they are dancing. It's time to stop. They dance a slow, tired dance back into the fridge. Sweet potatoes to the bin. Close the door and relax in the delicious coldness. Happy with thoughts of the night and their fantabulous parte. Yeah. <laughs> the end. Man, I want to go to that party. They seem to be having a good old time. Everybody's dancing, even artichoke. All he needed was some encouragement, okay? Man, oh man, they had a good time. Well, hopefully this helps you to like veggies a little better. I like veggies. Um, I do like artichokes quite a lot. I like them very much. And corn, and zucchini, and arugula. And okay, so I just like veggies. I think they're good, okay? But if maybe my adult friends you have a child who isn't crazy about veggies, once they realize how fun they are, they might think twice. Parte, okay? This was a really good book. I like that. And I, I, I really would like to be at that party. There's some people parties that aren't that fun. Now our next book, we're going from having a party to having to make a run for it, okay? Senorita Gordita. She's got to get out of there. By Helen Ketterman, 
and Will Terry. Let's see how she makes it up. All right, so Senorita Gordita is an Albert Whitman and Company book. All right, Aranya wiggled her legs as she set as she set the gordita on a paper towel to drain. Your one tasty looking gordita. I'm in for a treat. But that gordita hopped up. Oh no, Aranya. I'm one fast gordita. You can't catch me. And with a flip and a skip and a zip, zoom, zip, the gordita raced out the door. Senorita gordita, come back, called Aranya, chasing after her. Oh, man. I just made this tasty gordita, and she's going to make a run for it. What's up with that? But Senorita Gordita zipped through the desert till she came to a cresote bush. Lagarto was resting underneath. He opened one eye. Hola, senorita gordita. Come share my shade, he said. You look delicious. I, I mean, hot. <laughs> See his tongue out? I don't know if that would be wise. Senorita gordita jumped aside. Oh no, amigo. I ran from Aranya so fast I left her spinning. I'll run away from you too. I'm putting the pedal to the metal. Adios, Lagarto. And, and with a flip and a skip and a zip, zoom, zip, off she ran. And Lagarto. Lagarto skittered after her. Mm, you got, got to move faster than that, buddy. You're not so sped along. Pretolio slithered up. Buenos dias, senorita gordita. Say, you smell scrumptious. Come visit a while. <laughs> Buenos dias, Crotoyo. But no thanks. I airstreamed Aranya and gassed past Lagarto. So keep your fangs to yourself, Pretolio. And with a flip and a skip and a zip, zoom, zip, off she ran. Pretolio slithered after her. Oh, everybody trying to get a piece of Senorita Cordita. She must smell mighty tasty. After a while, she stopped to rest on the limb of a mesquite tree. Escorpion curled his stinger over his back. Hello, Senorita Gordita. You look tasty. I mean, lovely. Come a little closer, amiga, he said. I am rather fine looking, aren't I? But I airstreamed Aranya, gassed past Lagarto, and cruised past Crotolio. 
So put down your zinger of a stinger, a scorpion. You'll never catch me. And with a flip and a skip and a zip, 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 zip. She left a scorpion in a cloud of dust. A scorpion joined the chase. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, you don't. Senorita Gordita ran on. After a while, she came upon Javalina who was munching on a prickly pear cactus. Cavalina snorted, hola amiga, why the rush? Come join me for a lunch munch. Mm -mm -mm. Senorita Gordita shook her head. No way, Cavalina. You might want to lunch munch me, but I airstreamed Aranya, gassed past Lagarto, cruised past Crotoyo, and dusted Escorpion, and I'll lose you too, amigo. And with a flip and a skip and a zip zap zip, she hustled away. Javelina joined the chase. They are like, I am not giving up. She is too tasty. <laughs> Senorita Gordita laughed. I'm zip zoom fast as fast can be. No desert beast will lunch on me. Soon she came upon Coyote scratching at a ground squirrel burrow. Buenos dias, senorita gordita. Come help me dig out this burrow. There's a fat ground squirrel inside. Enough for both of us. No, senor coyote. You look hungry, amigo. I airstreamed the rana, gassed past lagarto, cruised past crotoyo, Dusted a scorpion and hustled away from Havalina. And I'll ditch you a skip and a zip, zap, zip. Senorita Gordita sped away. Coyote chased behind. Don't, not me. Senorita Gordita laughed. I love to run. It's fun, fun, fun. She whizzed along until she came to a tall saguaro, reaching its giant arms in, up to the sky. Asked Bujo, me. Senorita Gordita. <laughs> Come on, Paige. Bujo blinked his big yellow eyes. I see a cloud of dust is coming. Are you being chased? Yes, but I'm zip zoom fast. No one can catch me. They could if you get too tired, said Buho. Jump up here where you can rest safely for a bit. Mm -hmm. How nice of Buho. Or is it? Senorita Gordita cocked her head. That cloud of dust is a group of critters who want to eat me. 
Maybe that's what you want. Who, me? asked Bulbo. I hunt and eat at night. As you can see, it's daytime. The dust cloud is getting closer. You'd best get moving, senorita. <laughs> senorita Gordita looked at the approaching dust cloud. Buho was right. She did feel tired and hot. A rest would be good. Buho, she shouted. Buho blinked. Yes? Thanks for your offer. I'll come up for a rest. Senorita Gordita took a huge leap and landed beside Bujo, high on the saguaro. <laughs> Dita in his talons and opened his sharp beak and soon there was nothing left of Senorita Gordita except a few crumbs. Being zip zoom fast is good, Senorita, said Buko, but being smart is better. Oh, she got eaten by the owl, no! Oh, man! The end. Oh, that is a shame. She got eaten. Oh, good thing too. This book right here, Senorita Gordita, it has a recipe at the end for how to make gorditas. So you get a good story and a good treat at the same time. Nice. Teaches you how to make a gordita. And you know, you can put different fillings in, okay? So a gordita, and it has a glossary at the back too. A gordita is an endearment term meaning little fat one in Spanish. It also refers to a, a thick fried tortilla made of masa harina or corn flour and topped with various things. It's a favorite street vendor food in Mexico. Oh man, I have had gorditas with chicken or pork. If you want to taste something new, Dita right here, get this book, Senorita Gordita. This was a good book. Those two books were so good. So good, I'm so glad we got to read those. Now my friends, my friends, we are getting to more of walking with Miss Millie. All right, so to me, it looks like I'm a little glitchy. I don't know why. So let's see what that's about, why it's so glitchy. I don't know. But hopefully it doesn't get too bad. All right, so we were at chapter 
four. So let me catch you up. If you have not, if you weren't with us on our marvelous Monday broadcast. So we started reading Walking with Miss Millie by Tamara Bundy. And um, Eddie and it's Eddie and Alice. Eddie and Alice with their mom have had to move in with their grandmother mother because the grandmother's memory is not as good as it used to be. And so they moved to Rainbow, Georgia. I have never heard of Rainbow, Georgia. It is probably a really small town. So they had to move to Rainbow, Georgia with their grandmother. And Alice is not too happy about it. Her brother Eddie is, is deaf, um, but he's a very, very smart boy. And um, their mother has brought them there with her so that they can help take care of their grandmother whose memory isn't as good as it used to be. So Eddie was playing with his plate that he uses as a steering wheel all the time. And um, they meet their grandmother's neighbor, whose name is Miss Millie. And um, Alice starts talking to her and the grandmother must have been talking about Alice because Miss Millie knew a few things about her. So that's where we are now. After her, her first meeting with Miss Millie, okay? So we are in chapter four of Walking with Miss Millie. Oh, yes. And I think she has a dog that, that seems like it's kind of big and scary that Alice is afraid of. So let's find out more about Miss Millie and her dog and what life is going to be like now for Alice and Eddie and her mother um, in Rainbow, Georgia. Chapter four, walking with Miss Millie. When I got Eddie back to grandma's yard, I talked him into going into the shed and getting that bike and box for me. He came out of the shed, pushing the bike with the box resting on the seat, all the while grinning like it was the best bike in the world. He didn't seem to notice the rusted handlebars, the ones white wicker basket that was half on, half off, and the loose chain. You teach me, he signed and pointed to the bike. No, I signed back, since I didn't know the first thing about teaching someone to ride a bike. Daddy will teach you later. Eddie shook his head, shaking loose the cobweb stuck in his hair. Daddy gone. Daddy all the time gone. I couldn't argue with that. This time, daddy'd been gone six months. Time before that, it was three months. But each time he came back, I knew he'd come back this time too. Still, I couldn't explain all that to Eddie. So I just said, we need to clean the bike up first. 
see if it can be fixed before anybody rides it. Eddie nodded like usual. I picked up the little faded gold box from the bicycle seat. I could tell it was my mama's handwriting that once wrote her name and daddy's name inside the heart. It made my heart feel bad, wondering if mama might still think she and daddy belong inside the same heart. I sat down beside the shed, just looking at the dang box for the the longest time, like I expected it to talk to me or something. I couldn't bring myself to open it. Eddie sat down next to me. What's in it, he signed. I shrugged and assigned every, I shrugged and assigned everyone understood. Eddie reached for the box and opened it. Inside, there were envelopes, stacks, all with my mama's name written in my daddy's handwriting. A jumble of feelings raced inside me, trying to be felt at the same time. I felt sneaky, like I shouldn't look at my mama's letters from my daddy, knowing they weren't written for my eyes. I felt happy to find something from my daddy when I was missing him so much. I felt sad that the yellowed old letters were all that I had to make me happy about my daddy. Eddie just peeked in inside the envelope and shrugged in disappointment. He dropped the box and went back to seeing about fixing the bike. Help me fix, he signed. I tucked the box in, back inside the shed, planning to, to return when Eddie wasn't around. When we went inside grandma's house to get some, ra some rags to clean the bike, the house smelled better for sure. But, but I could tell mama wasn't feeling any better about it. And the other thing crazy messed up house grandma still seemed okay and other than the crazy mixed up messed up house grandma still seemed okay to me I kept holding on to the hope that we'd be able to go back to Columbus where I wouldn't have to hold yellowed letters to think of daddy and he could teach Eddie to ride a bike and teach me everything else he hadn't taught me yet. Sure, we gave the landlord notice and had a yard sale selling every single item that represented home to us. But I kept thinking we would head back north just as soon as Mama came to the rational conclusion that Grandma was fine. After cleaning that bike and finally fitting that chain back where it belonged, I tried to teach Eddie how to ride. Of course, as soon as Eddie realized he wasn't going to learn to ride it in a few minutes, he was bored with trying and went right back to his plate that needed no lessons to drive. While he drove his plate up and down the sidewalk in front of Grandma's house, I rode the old bike up and down the bumpy road, bouncing up and down each time going a little farther than the last. On my longest spin up the street, I went around the corner and all the way to Grandma's church, the only church in Rainbow. Up in Ohio, we had all kinds of churches around us. We had a Catholic church, a Baptist church, and even a Methodist church. But there's only one church in this little town. I wasn't really looking for any, for a kid my age to play with as I rode around. 
since it didn't matter to me at all. What with us not staying for long. But if I was looking, I would have seen only one kid out at all. And I couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl kid. I could tell the hair was short and messy, making me think it was a boy. But there was something kind of girlish to make me wonder. By the time I got back from that spin up the street, I realized I must have gone been gone a little longer than I thought. Because in front of grandma's house, there were two kids, definitely boys, stopped on their own bikes. I could tell one of them was yelling at Eddie, of course, who, of course, wasn't hearing any of it. As I got closer, I heard, a, I heard the boy shout, I asked you what you was doing with that plate. Y'all stupid or something? Answer me. When I heard those words, I pedaled my bike so fast the old brakes couldn't stop me soon enough. My bike ran smack into the bike of the boy not yelling. And I was, and I knocked both of us down. The yeller thought this was hysterical and burst out laughing. Guess they're all stupid, he said. The boy I ran into was small as he stood up too. He reached out to my bike and I yelled, don't touch it. And then I turned to the yeller and yelled back, and you, don't say that my brother, don't say that about my brother. He's deaf, but he's a lot smarter than you. By this time, Eddie was aware of something going on and he was standing next to us, waving like he was happy to meet new friends. I signed to him, go up to the porch. These guys are not nice. I picked up the old bike and began to walk away, but not be before hearing the tall kids say, man, it's a family of freaks. Just what the neighborhood needs. The other one said something too. But I turned them both out. My eyes stung with anger and the tears I was holding in. I stomped to the porch and dropped the bike so fast, the fixed chain fell back off. Eddie followed me and I saw in his eyes that he was waiting for me to explain, but I was so mad I couldn't sign to him. I just shook my head and sat down on the porch swing. but I've never been able to hide my feelings from Eddie. It's like, because he can't hear, he can see things better. Why are you mad? He signed. I am mad. I answered with my hands because rainbow is stupid. Moving is stupid and Everyone is stupid. As if the day wasn't bad enough, the sign for stupid is a fist up against your forehead. And when I signed it three times, being so stinking mad, I actually smacked myself in the head too hard and it hurt. My brother thought that was the funniest thing in the world and 
started doing his own exaggerated stupid sign, pretending to fall over when he hit his head. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I had to smile. Eddie's movement made the swing sway back and forth and I began to relax a little bit. I took a deep breath and recognized the smell of mama's chicken and dumplings coming from the house. I was just about to suggest to Eddie that we go inside to see if supper was ready when I heard the crunch of footsteps coming from the backyard. It was grandma walking toward the sidewalk in front of the house. She was in her nightgown. Something told me she wasn't heading to a slumber party. And I just knew more bad news was about to pour down on us and Rainbow. Chapter five. Grandma, I hollered to get her attention since she looked kind of lost in spite of the fact she was only 20 steps from her house. Grandma, what are you doing? Yeah, Joni, are you back? Since she called me my mama's name, I figured the sun, which was pretty bright, must be in her eyes. It's me, Grandma, Alice, and Eddie's here. Why are you in your nightgown? And where are you going? Eddie, of course, saw Grandma too. And I'm guessing he thought she was playing some sort of dress up game. What with being outside in her nightgown and all. Still in a laughing mood from before, he started cracking up again. But I could hear grandma wasn't laughing. Not at all. Oh dear, she mumbled as I walked closer to her. By then, she was looking at the ground like she dropped something real important. Important. Oh dear, her voice sounded all sh shaky and I feared she was about to burst into tears or something. So I ran inside to get mama. Mama helped grandma back inside and took her to her room. She told Eddie and me to go ahead and eat. But even though my stomach was rumbling just a few minutes earlier, I kind of lost my appetite. I popped a dumpling in my mouth and chewed it about 50 times, but it still felt like I was swallowing a biscuit whole. That's when I heard the phone ring, but it wasn't the usual slow ringing like a phone from my house. It was a more fast ring ring, sound like the phone tried to ring as usual, but instead just stuttered. Since grandma's only phone was in the living room and I knew she and mama were busy. And cause I was hoping that phone call might be from someone like daddy. I ran to the phone and picked it up. But before I could say anything, I heard a conversation already going on. That's when I heard grandma, that's when I remembered grandma had what's called a party line, which sounds like it should be fun, but it's really not. It's just a phone line shared with her neighbors. Of course, as small as Rainbow is, I guess it's a wonder they don't all have to share just one phone for the whole town. I listened to two 
ladies gossiping about the grocery store owner's daughter, Maddie, who was out late the weekend before with the son of the guy who works at the post office. Her daddy was madder than a wet hen when she came, when she, she comes strolling home way past when she oughta. Who we? She might not see the light of day for a while. And who could blame her daddy after her ma left the family in such disgrace? Well, you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I had no idea who these ladies were talking about or even who these ladies were until I heard in the background the same growling monster noise I heard from the back fence all day and realized Miss Millie must be one of the ladies on the phone. She wasn't the one gossiping, but she was the one listening to the gossip when she wasn't saying, hush up, hush up. The barking, growling monster actually did hush up as Miss Millie offered her own gossip. Poor Clarence is almost completely blind now. Can't see anything except Alice Ann. Mama's voice shocked me something fierce and made me drop the phone. I could hear the ladies on the phone saying something as I tried to put the receiver back. But somehow the phone suddenly seemed coated in butter. And it took me three tries to hang up that dang phone with it slipping all over the place. Eddie didn't miss the little show I was putting on with the falling phone. He started laughing so hard, he spat out a dumpling. I thought if I tried to act silly here and make Eddie laugh, mama would forget about me listening in on that conversation. Of course, Mama doesn't forget anything ever. Young lady, you were eavesdropping on a party line. It was definitely a question, but she didn't wait for an answer. I can't believe it. Have I not? taught you any better than that? Mama says stuff like that sometimes makes me feel lower than gunk on the bottom of a shoe. Sorry, Mama, I was bored and the phone rang and I really didn't hear anything, just some gossip about the groceries grocer's daughter and somebody's son. As soon as those words fell out of my mouth, I knew I was digging myself into a hole. Gossip. Now you're repeating gossip. You know we don't do that. Have you no morals? No, Mama. It it was only Miss Millie and some lady. Mama gasped. Mama's gasp made me realize that last bit of information wasn't helping my case. I needed to 